Can you define design for retail? You know, so many people define design in different ways. Yeah, there's a, you know, the definition of order out of chaos or, you know, but I think that we sort of think of it as is that art is personal. So if you're an artist, you're creating mm -hmm. an object, even if you're creating art furniture or art, you know, object sculpture, you're creating an expression of yourself, an individualist expression, a message that you want to send. And so you... it's not about who's going to use it or who's going to buy it or who's going to make it. It's about expression. And then, of course, then there's the other side of just making something. <laughs> you know, you, you, you know, an artisan, it's about craft, how you make it. And design is somewhere in the middle, I think. Well, there's also style. I mean, style Stuff. is the other aspect, I think, to craft. And, and style is only one component of design, but it's purely about how something looks without consideration to how it's made, where it's retailing. How it functions. Yes, exactly. So design is really the perfect balance of the needs of the user, the needs of the factory, uh, manufacturing, the needs of the client. Or the way that it's sold. You right. know? So the needs of the retailer or the, or the sales venue. Yeah. Design really has to consider all those aspects and put it together in, in the right balance. And, you know, America is such a commerce-driven country. It's, that's, you know, there's a lot of design that needs to be going on right now if we're going to keep our GDP up. How did you end up designing for companies like Target, Costco, and Staples? You know, I don't think we set out to design products for mass market retail. In fact, we probably initially set out to do maybe a little higher end product. Well, we set out in contract first. so Contract furniture, yes. Uh, so, you know, working for companies like Herman Miller and Steelcase, definitely mass market retail is not where we started. But it did sort of find us. And as we got into it, I think not only did we find the challenge exciting, but um, we became, I think, more interested in bringing good design to a larger group of people. Design for the masses, yeah. I mean, I think that we, we really did evolve into that because we believe that design should be accessible to everyone, mm -hmm. that it should be avail you know, there's no reason why you can't have a great chair at $99 and you should have to spend $600 if you don't have that kind of money. So there's no reason that those products can't be designed. Those products don't just need to be engineered because the design part isn't the expensive part. The expensive part are the materials and the processing and, and the shipping, all of those things add up. And so it's just working on a design within a tighter constraint. And I think as we, in our earlier in our career learned more about the realities of material and manufacturing costs, we say to ourselves, gosh, why does something have to be that expensive? Looking at a higher end product, realizing that it doesn't, right. then it's actually more exciting to bring good design to the masses. Right, exactly. Can I really find good design at a club or mass retailer? Hmm. Sometimes. <laughs> Rarely. Answer. It's, you know, for mass market and club retail, I mean, it's all about providing value. And so, yes, you can provide, you can find a good value. And in the club stores, I mean, we shop there all the time. You can definitely find a good value. Mm. Um, and... Decent design, not, but it's rare to find good design because it's not the goal of the process. It's sort of not there overall. No one's being measured on that, so it's not, it's not set up to happen. If you find a product that you connect with emotionally, if consumers find a product they connect with emotionally, that may very well be good design. Yeah. But as you said, it's the, not the primary goal to provide good design. It's to provide the best feature, function, value for your money. And it's also just a venue for a brand. So you mm. find good brands, you find, you know, brands that give you quality or value that you appreciate. And so that's the goal of it. But it's, it's the retail stores and the mass market club, they're all a venue for a brand. So design mm. is not a significant part of that. Sometimes it is if that brand happens to have good design as a core component of it. Dyson, you know, that's inarguably a very good quality, very high design 
you can find them at your Target. You can find them at, um, I don't know if you can find them at Walmart. I know you can find mm. them at Target and you can find them in the club. Yeah. So, you know, that's one of those items where you know you're buying a good design and you know you're buying quality and you know you're probably buying at the best price possible. So all in all, you get a great package there. So it can happen, but it's because that brand believes in, in good design, just like you buy an Apple product at a Best Buy store. It can also be depending on that retailer uh, what the buyer at that retailer who's actually deciding what products go in the store yeah. believes in. I mean, a lot of these buyers don't understand design, don't know anything about design, don't care about design. All they care about is sales performance. So if that's what they care about, design is a really not Just a consideration. Third. Right. Um, but... If they do happen to be someone that appreciates design, yes, good design can get in there. But again, it's rare. It is rare. Can you explain the differences between style and design? Mm. Styling is one aspect of design. It's yeah. just one small component. Think about it this way. Think about it. You hear about stylists, like um, celebrity stylists, those that are dressing you for the red carpet. And what do they do is they go out there and they shop. They're really good shoppers. They shop in places that you have no access to. And they put together a combination of clothes and, and uh, accessories and shoes that no one imagined should go together. That's kind of what a stylist does, whether they're styling furniture or styling a computer accessory. Is What they're taking together is a bunch of co colors, materials, components, and things, combining them together and making a product. But there's no design in that. In the design, there's no invention part of that. So there's nothing that is sort of like user-focused in that. It's all about creating a certain look, a certain style, a certain... Uh, message or a certain brand image. It's not about the user. Independent of everything else. They're not considering the needs of the, the real needs of the consumer. They're not considering the needs of manufacturing, the limitations of manufacturing. Right. Um, they're not considering any psychology of who's going to buy it, the demographics of who's going to buy it it's in, and at certain levels. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with styling. Right. Don't get me wrong. There's a great place for it. There's a lot of stylists out, you know, if you go to these design houses that are doing, you know, large communities or helping you style your interior of your home, they're helping you make smart choices with materials mm -hmm. and smart choices with flooring and make sure everything coordinates together and looks good. So there is a, gr right. a great service being provided by stylists. But if you've only got a stylist designing a product that you're making that's a problem right the best designers really understand how things are manufactured they understand the limitations of manufacturing and they understand how to get the most out of those manufacturing techniques and limitations the most style out of it as well right. <laughs> so, so it, it's it's, it's a difference between uh, balancing in a holistic way all the different factors that go into making a product yeah what it function ends up being form the aesthetics mm -hmm. yeah. okay. for designer label brands who's really behind all those designs mm. well Good i question. think that the big thing is that you need the definition between brand and design so you know you buy martha stewart cindy crawford kathy ireland uh, Cynthia Raleigh, Michael Graves, you buy any of those things and they carry a brand identity with them. Now some of them have a better design background. Um, Martha Stewart and arguably her organization, and we know that intimately because we've worked with her a company before, they have designers in that organization, industrial designers who care about how the products are made and how it happens. But that but the even that designer, has Martha Stewart, is not designing those products. She's set up a quality requirement, style requirement, right. and her people carry yeah. that out. So, you know, but they have a quality level, and, and so you're getting something special for that brand. So if you believe in Martha Stewart, and we do, but mm -hmm. if you believe in Martha Stewart and her brand, you know, there's a level of expectation of design quality, design style, material quality. You, you get all of that from that. So they are providing a tremendous service, but there are a lot of brands out there that are just names. 
So they're just celebrity names that they slap on a brand of a product they were already buying in China anyway. They just figure if they put that, that known name on there, that celebrity, then what happens is, is that you'll just buy it. You and will so recognize you're not getting... it, you'll feel more comfortable about it, and you will buy it. But in reality, it's costing the consumer more because there is a three, four, five percent of the cost of that product that is doing nothing but paying for that licensed brand. Right. So what we do differently is, is that we actually yeah. design and develop all the products that we're associated with. But our, we're hidden. So like mm -hmm. you don't see our designer name on it very often. Sometimes you do, but mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a couple of club products where our pictures are on there and our, our name brand is on there. But it's not as common. And what is more common is for us to be behind the scenes doing the actual real design work to make sure that the users love it, make sure it's got all the highest quality possible, make sure you're packing in as much features as possible that the users care about. Um, and then what ends up happening is, is that that gets sold by under some company brand name. So, so the irony is sometimes you'll have a product that doesn't have a, a well-known brand name that's actually a better designed product right. and a better value for the consumer than the ones that have a well-recognized national brand. Right. So that the, the real tip to the consumer is don't buy the brand unless you absolutely love the product just because you know, somebody's pictures on the box doesn't mean that it has anything to do with what they have in their home or what they buy. They are being, I mean, it, it's a fee. They're being paid a fee to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's commercial.